journey, um, you know, as an entrepreneur, like you mentioned, it started in your 20s. But with your recent venture, um, can you just walk us through the moment you decided to go to start working on this and what that journey looked like? So um, actually, the moment was um, I was um, making a donation uh, through my company. And so um, I've made donations through the company before. And so this time uh, I went into their portal. Something just told me go into the portal, put up, put in and put some ministries names in it that I, I, I've given to in the past. And I started seeing, you know, okay, I'm like living word. Oh, I'm like, okay. I'm like Joseph Business School. I'm like, oh my goodness. And so I started putting in other ministries just off the cuff. And I'm like, okay, Joyce Myers ministry. I see these in here and I'm like, hmm, if I didn't know about these, I'm sure nobody else probably knew. And I'm like, majority of people are already giving to various organizations or to their churches. And this alone could double the donation or double the tide or du double the offering. And so I was like, okay. And then uh, I actually transitioned out of my job in June. And so, but before I left, I said, oh, I seen something that said volunteer hours. And I'm like, they have volunteer hours that they match money. They're monetized my volunteer hours. I'm like, oh my, I, I, I was at a loss because I, I truly volunteer. And then I thought about, all the churches that have volunteers come in early in the morning and stay late at night. I'm like, if they their company offers such a program, they can log those hours in and the company will give the church or the nonprofit or the 501c3 or whatever organization it is money. They will monetize that. And so I'm like, okay, Lord. And one of my girlfriends, one of my best friends, we go walking and we were talking. And I, we I always talk about you know, um, the company match and company match. Cause I, I've done it. I used to work at uh, ComEd many years ago, over a couple of decades ago. And I actually solicited, I volunteered. I was a co-chair, a chairperson. And so I even put in the, the, the data entry of, you know, when people gave their donations through the company, I, I entered the data and I got to see, you know, I'm like, okay, our, our company is really doing, and a good job about getting this information out to the employees. And so I was like, okay, but I noticed, you know, within my company, I was just talking to a couple of employees and they didn't know about the gift matching program. They had no, no, no clue. And they have been there longer than me. And so God is saying that there's lack of awareness. Mm -hmm. And so engagement, I mean, the you know, you, the C-suite, the executive suite, they're going to give because they're being looked at, so to speak. I said, but it's really the lay person, the, the union people, the people, the admins, that they're probably the larger givers when you corporately. Yeah. And if they don't know about it, then uh, you're leaving money on the table. Like I said, at, based on, and I think it's more based on what I've been reading and, 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 and studying, they're saying five to four to $10 billion go untapped or unutilized. I think it's more than that. I really do. And so I just started talking to my girlfriend about it. And I said, okay, just like the Holy Spirit would do. He dropped it in my spirit. He's like, that's a business opportunity you to get before some of these CFOs who already have budgets. Let's see what we can do to increase and maximize the employee giving. And so, and that's why I started doing my research on it. And so I've been talking to a couple of people. Um, God has, I went to a conference and I know it was God ordained. The woman that I was sitting next to, I wasn't really going to be engaged with them because uh, when we were partnershiping or partnering up, she had her husband. And so she's like, I was just left out. And she said, no, come over here with us. And so when I started talking and sharing my idea, she like, it's like a light bulb. She said, do you know, I work for a nonprofit and I was the person that went around for my company to decide what we're going to, who we're going to give to. So she gave me a, a wealth of knowledge. And so wow. I'm like, oh my goodness. And so she gave me a, a business plan, so to speak, for the corporate setting. And so in, in my prayer time, God said, what you need to do also 
you need to do an initiative with the churches. Send the churches the information about corporate giving and let them share it with their congregants, you know. And so I've been talking to a few pastors and and so a lot of them want to share the information and a lot of them want me to share it. And so I was like, okay, Lord, I'm going to count that to my account. I was like, if we can get this extra dollars for the churches and the non-for-profits that the churches actually are affiliated to, that we're a win-win. I said, we can't let money go on use anymore especially if the corporations are giving us the money they already have a budget so and that's my thing if you have a budget and you're not utilizing the budget then somebody needs to come in and help you yeah. help you with awareness help you with engagement so that's where that's where that was birthed from wow wow it's it's interesting like i never knew that corporations well i know corporations give to non-for-profits but given to ministry is new is news to me. Yeah, that was news to me too. It's like, oh wow. wow. I was like, oh wow. Oh. Now I don't know what the criteria are and the reason why those ministries were set up in there, but I know it was nothing but the Holy Spirit. And so I'm like, if my company does it, I know there's probably a plethora of other companies. Fortune 500 companies, even smaller companies that will make donations that are probably doing it. And we just don't know about it. You know, yeah. Yeah. Our people perish for a lack of knowledge, the word yeah. of God. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Um, so I, 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 I'm a advocate for elevator pitches where I ask entrepreneurs, tell me in the, in the, in the, in the one liner what your company does. Uh, what your mission is and i want to see if you're comfortable giving me your one-liner and your mission statement all at once <laughs> i actually just tweak my mission statement that's the funny part i actually just tweak it because i'm like lord okay and so basically i'm like karen samaritan is to help increase funding for nonprofits and 501c3 organizations through corporate philanthropy programs while utilizing corporate matching gifts and corporate volunteer grants. Wow. Yep. That's it. It's clear and succinct. So I, I, yeah, that, that's exactly it. But I should ask you the name of your, of your company. How did you come about that name? So I, I remember talking with, on, on, with you and M and I'm like, you guys, please, I didn't have a name. I said, please pray for me to come up with a name. And so I knew I wanted my name to resemble my husband. His name is, his first name is Carl. And a, I would call her my uh, big sister, but she's no longer with her. Her name was Carmen. They're the most giving two people I know. I know there's a ton of giving people out there, but I knew them. You know, I saw what they did. I saw, I see what my husband does. He's a giver, you know of his self, of his time, of his money. And so um, I was like, okay, Lord. And so caring, the C-A-R comes from Carl and Carmen, but God brought it to Caring Samaritan because it brought me back to, you know, Luke 10. And so that's why I got the name from. I'm like, okay, hey, we are all who are givers, caring Samaritans. We all care. And so when I read, that scripture it just goes back to this is a valid name this name came from the holy spirit all i asked the holy spirit like, i want the name to have my husband and carmen's name somewhere encountered in it and and the holy spirit showed up and showed out with it wow wow very very interesting um story and we all could learn from that in terms of any help that we need as entrepreneurs just tapping into the guidance of the Holy Spirit to guide us through those those decision makings. Um, I guess a follow up question to that is, can you walk me through um, what a typical day would look like for you as a business owner? What would that look like for you? So every day is different, of course, but a lot of it has been because this is so so fresh, and so it's nothing new because there's nothing new under the sun. God had created this already but it's so fresh for me and so i've been um staying in atmosphere of prayer just seeking god it's like oh how is this uh to come about how is this going to you know formulate how i i just want to do it your way 
I've I've been in the entrepreneur space. I've been a realtor. I've been I, I've had several different entrepreneurial hats, but I want this God's way is and so I'm seeking him I'm praying and you know I'm 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 just seeking God I'm beseeching heaven you know I'm like God this is all you and I just need to make sure that I align so even to the point I'm like I get up like okay God what do I do today what do I do and so what what is the plan and so some days like I said are different than others some days I'm staying in prayer some days I'm just getting I uh, he told me to get a, a a new bible um I got Tony's Evans uh bible that's you know it's you know it helps me to understand it's very it's a very good bible and so I'm like okay all right lord I, I need to stretch myself and so well I need to be open to the stretch because you're the one that's stretching you're the one that's you know doing the impartation and and, and laying the hands on this business so I just have to be open and so like I said, every day doesn't look the same. Some days I'm like, Lord, I got to pay these bills. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm like, okay, Lord. But he said, do do it all in joy. And so that's what I, I was like, okay. So I'm pay the bills and do it in joy. Do it in joy. I was like, and if I don't feel the joy, I was like, let me just pray in time so, so I can build myself up in the most yeah. holy faith. Yeah. Yeah. So, Yes. And that's what I've been doing. That's what I've been doing. You know, when he tells me to reach out to different churches, I do, you know, I, I send emails, I send the, you know, the presentation and tell them, hey, let me know uh, if you have any questions. Yeah. It's a very, very, um, very insightful approach as to how to, as a kingdom entrepreneur, how to make sure you, you know, you, you, you pray for your day. You yes. pray for the day and then you continue you know when you, when you have the time or when you make time you know you're praying in the holy spirit for guidance to you know because pastor winston says that you know when you go to bed the holy spirit is still working on what you ask yeah. you know so you want to make sure you stay engaged yes. um to to do that um a couple of years ago we had pastor david winston as a guest um guest speaker at uh, the jbs alumni association and he mentioned that um, you need to have mentors in your life, but the mentors in your life have to be like 10 levels ahead of you, mm -hmm. have to have gone through what you're planning to go through, yes. you know, so as, as an entrepreneur, can, are there any um, role models, mentors that you look up to that you like to share with the, uh, the audience on, the, on this, um, on this call? So uh, when I saw that question, I, I was like, okay, Lord, instantly I said, Pastor Winston, and then the Holy Spirit said, what about Jesus? I was like, okay, <laughs> okay, okay, Holy Spirit, you are to shut me down. You're absolutely right. Hey, Jesus. And so I said, Pastor Winston, um, I recently just uh, started kind of following, it's not really following, but I read this young lady's book. Um, her name is Neon Francois. And um she uh, made a multi-million dollar business out of cupcakes. I think she's in Nashville. I said, I'm going to go down there and visit. Hopefully she's there and she can sign my, my book. But um, yeah, I, I, there's, there's so many, too many to uh, mention. Um, Dr. Tiffany Jordan, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Yes. Yeah, so I've been taking a couple of her um, classes. Uh, I'm part of her KU uh, University, so I'm just learning and growing. And so, but yeah, uh, you know, the spiritual father of all fathers, Pastor Winston. I was <laughs> like, so uh, he simplifies it for me. I can't talk about nobody else, but I, I get it. And so I'm like, okay, Lord. And I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to meditate and, and continue to eat off the word that he provides, the insight and the wisdom. And so... Oh, definitely he is one. And so I'll say Sister Winston because she's the ultimate prayer warrior. And so I got her book many years ago. And so, you know, I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm like, I, I want to pray like that. And it's like, hey, do the work, do the work, stay yeah. engaged with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and trust and believe in what God has set forth for us. And so I'm like, okay, Lord. Uh, all right. Because I mean, I knew to pray for Israel, but now I'm starting to really 
get in depth to understand why, why. And so I was like, okay, hey, I just don't want the word to be um, on paper. I want it to be in me. So me saying that, although my business is called Caring Samaritan, I am a Caring Samaritan. Okay. And so I have to uh, confess that over my life. I am a Karen Samaritan. And so in dealing with, with this business, uh, and I prayed about it, and God was saying, okay. I was like, he said, whatever this business make, I, I said, God, I give you 50%, whatever, 50%. I was like, you know, I've heard how um, faith works. I've seen how faith works. So I'm going to try faith always. So he says, try me, says the Lord. So that's that that's what I'm that's those are the those are the people I like I said, there's several, but I I kind of try to stick to home because you see the fruit. Yes. I see the fruit in Pastor yep. Winston. I see the fruit in Sister Veronica. I see the fruit in Dr. Tiffany. I see the fruit. So awesome, awesome. Um, so I would say, um, how do you see your business evolving in the coming years? Like, so, where do you see it going? In the, you know, I know this is the, the, the Bible says, uh, you know, do not despise the day of small beginnings. Right. However, you're starting now. What is your vision? It's, it's funny you say that because I know we've said, I've heard this cliche, don't put the cart before the horse. But if you look at the word of God, the cart is always before the horse. Yeah. And so I'm like, you know what, Lord, when I was setting up my business banking account, the young lady was like, well, what's the um, the projected um, income? And so I gave a, a kind of low number and the Holy Spirit was like, really? I didn't tell you that. And so I, I said, okay, 250,000. And so she was like, okay. And so, and as she's putting it in there and the Holy Spirit says, share, Carrington Samaritan's mission with her and so I shared it now she's looking into her company into the banking company to see if they you know have such a program and I said that's what it, it, it has to start and so I have an opportunity I'm believing God I have an opportunity with my old company to um, go back and talk to them about hey their expansion as far as how can I help you I know I can I know I can help you increase, but I need to know art. Right, because a lot of a lot of times people just, and I don't want to say this about companies, but they do it. They showboat. Okay, we, you know, we have this going on. We do this and we and so the you have to actually let the employees know this is a benefit. It's a benefit. Just like any other 401k, uh, uh health insurance, it's a benefit when you can tell them and, and show them this is a benefit because most of them, like I said are already given so you got to make sure they know you care about what they care about so for the i would say with my projection for five five years um it's funny because i put a lot down on several of my um um uh, webs sites and my domains for Karen Samaritan. I took all the different names and God is showing me that somebody's going to want not this name, but the names that I have. And so that's going to open a door for some extra streams of income. But I, I, I see um, me sharing this in a bigger stage. Okay? So going before the CFOs and letting them see, hoping my, my, a ultimate mission is to maybe have corporations actually fund one organization so these organizations don't have to be scrambling for monies from this corporation this corporation no you be this you you be the seed for them and so that's my ultimate goal that's my ultimate vision is it, so let, i guess one thing that crossed my mind as you were describing your business is the in the the fact that corporations could um they have a budget and they could actually um fund and support non it, that's not public information right it is it is uh, and so um ge i think it was 1954 ge was the first company to start corporate gift matching um, whoever the president at the time was or the CEO at the time, he wanted the, the employees to know 
hey, that we care about what you care about. And so GE is one of the, um, you know, I applaud them just for taking the initiative and then everybody else start following on. And so oh, there are websites out there that you can put your company's name in there and they'll tell you if they are part of a corporate philanthropy program, if they're part of a volunteer grant program, or if they're part of the gift matching where they match dollar for dollar program. And so um, it's called, I think Charity Navigator is one.com. No, charitynavigator.org. And org. then you have double the donation. Dot com. Those are two websites that uh, I really use double the donations because, you know, they're the, you know, they're the cream of the cream when it comes to information. But those are two websites you can go online and, and put your company's name in there. I've done it, you know, just to play around in it. And so they'll tell you if your company uh, is one that does the gift matching program and it'll tell you what the actual dollar amount that they would match. For example, my company matched $7,500. So they anything up to $7,500 in the first $2,500, they did $2 to one. So you gave $2,500, then that company was getting $7,500, basically. So it's like, okay, okay, you're doing a two to one match. And so anything after the $2,500, they did a dollar for dollar. So yeah, the, the information is there, uh, it's public knowledge. Uh, and so, but because we don't know, we're not made aware, again, a lack of knowledge. We don't know what we don't know. And so, and I didn't know it till, till I happened to, to the Holy Spirit open my eyes to it. It's um the reason I asked that question because I was like I know your mission your your business is corporate funding ministry you know which that was never obvious until the Holy Spirit showed you that that is doable it's possible it's it should happen you know so I, I guess what I wanted to ask is um if people wanted to find more information about this opportunity where can they find what kind of uh, is your is your website up up and running already? And nope, my website is not up, but my they can send me an email. It says my email address is contact us at caringsamaritan.com. Okay. Can you spell out the name of the company so they could hear it on the recording again? Contact yeah. us at contact us at caring samaritan. It's C A R I N G S. A M A R I T A N dot com. Awesome. Awesome. I want to make sure they got that so we can, yes. you know, they could start as we, as we, as, like I mentioned to you, when this goes out, we want to make sure people to capture that and we'll put that all in the, in the body of the social when we send it out. Um, I guess one final question I could ask is, is there any message or piece of wisdom you'd like to to uh, impart to our listeners uh, today as an entrepreneur, a faith-based entrepreneur? Don't quit. Quit is not an option. It's not. If God gave you the vision, he's going to provide the provision. It's like, so oh, what I realized is that God has given me many ideas, but I sat on them. And so um, now I'm not sitting on them. I'm running with it. And taking off and just believing God for whatever it's going to take me. Oh, and so don't, you know, nothing's too small or nothing's too big. No dream is too small and no dream is too big. So, oh, what I did, I just recently, and it, it was, it, God brought this to me. He keeps reminding me of this. And I think it's Genesis 6, 11, where when they were building the tower of Babel and God came down to see what they were doing. Now, these are God's people. You know, he knows, what's going on. and he said, oh my goodness, nothing they imagine can restrain them. And I was like, oh, wow. When I got that, I'm like, Lord, even though you stopped them, but you still let me know nothing can restrain me That's if right. I'm doing what you call me to do. If I'm doing your vision, your dreams. Yes. If I'm working everything out. And so, you know, I'm just grateful for that and let them know nothing can restrain us nothing nothing if we have the vision and it's from god nothing i mean i'm to be honest with you nothing can restrain the world they still doing they still doing 
the, the they're negative, you know, and they still look like they're prospering, but we all know that's not what's happening. It looks like that. That's and right. so, well, but if we stay focused and tuned in on what God is saying about God's plan, it's not about us, it's his plan. And I'm realizing it's his plan. And once you do his plan, everything else is going to work itself out. Awesome. Awesome. Well, there you have it, folks. This is Deborah Davis sharing her insights, her journey, JBS alumni 2008. Um, Deborah, I want to thank you so much for um, your time, telling us your journey, telling us how you are, you know, disrupting the corporate given environment and how you're going to connect, make that connection between corporate given and ministry. Um, it's very important. What you're doing is needed. Um, because we know that not all churches are built equal and churches out there need to know about this or, um, you know, faith-based organizations need to know about this so they can, you know, tap into this and, um, and, and tap into the, and it's, it's like the, like Pastor Winston would say, you have priests and king. So the kings are the corporations and the priests are the ministries and how they're going to work together to advance the kingdom of God. So I want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Um, this afternoon and we look forward to celebrating and sharing all the victories you're going to have with this business amen. In this name amen thank you Deco. i appreciate it i appreciate you appreciate the opportunity but i think i'm like i thank god because i was like i wasn't even there and somebody told me hey you won something i'm like i won something and then i left <laughs> i came late <laughs>